This is a demonstration to show how to complete the Excel 2021 Guided Project 1-3. Um, first thing you need to do is download the start file and the resources file. And you'll notice that uh, one of those files, I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see better, um, is the wherever 01, and then there's a Wayne Jensen. Uh, Mine is Wayne Jensen. It'll append your first and last name. So you need to open both of those uh, to start the project. So when you're opening up two worksheets or workbooks rather. Um, and then once those are opened, you'll notice that uh, there's two workbooks open here. So if I go down here, it shows and click on the Excel. Uh, icon down there. You can see wherever 01 and the Wayne Jensen Excel 2021 is open. So you need to click on the enable editing button for both of those. So that I just did it for the wherever dash 01. I'm going to go back here to the Wayne Jensen one and, and click enable editing. And it looks like the um, Wayne Jensen one's blank. So we're going to go back to the wherever dash one and uh, we're going to click on the zoom out button in the status bar five times so right now it's at 150 percent so I'm going to click on this one two three four five times so we're, right now we're working on the wherever dash one workbook and then we're going to click on the um, view and click on this freeze panes button and unfreeze the panes. And then we're going to switch, click click the switch windows button. So uh, right here, and I'm going to make sure that both um, the wherever dash on one and the guided project with your name appended to it are both open. And we're going to display the wherever on one uh, workbook. And that completes step number three. For step four, we're going to uh, copy a worksheet to another workbook. So we're going to right click the sheet one in the wherever 01 uh, workbook. Right click that, and we're going to select move or copy. And then we're going to click the two book drop down list, and we're going to select the Wayne Jensen or whatever your name is is appended to the file and then we're going to click on the create a copy button here and then we're going to click OK and um, the copied sheet inserts into sheet one um, in the other workbook so if we were to look at the other workbook here we can see that it has that same sheet so it says sheet one and then parentheses that says two so I'm going to go back to the wherever. Um, and then if we click on the switch windows button, um, so right here, and choose the wherever one button, and then close that without saving it. Don't save. So now the only one that's open is this um, project 1-3. Workbook. And so that's the one that we're working on. So that completes step number four. So we're going to, for step five, rename and delete sheets. So we're going to double click the sheet two tab, or sheet one two tab. Double click that, and then we're going to type inventory. We're basically renaming this um, work, worksheet tab. And then we're going to right click the sheet one tab and choose the delete option. And then click delete and it comes up. So now you should only have the inventory workbook, work, worksheet in your workbook. And that completes step five. Six, we're going to fill a label series and delete a column. So we're going to click on cell A4. So we're going to go up here to the A column and click on A4. We know it's A4 is select because it's in our name box is A4. And then we're going to type uppercase WEA and 
zero zero one and then press enter and then we're going to select a4 again and we're going to click on its fill handle and oh we're going to double click its fill handle excuse me and then that fills that series down um, and then we're going to right click the column j heading and choose delete Okay, so what we're doing is basically deleting that column. So right click on the J col the column J heading and choose delete. And that completes step six. For step seven, we're going to use the fill handle to copy a formula. So we're going to click on H4 this time. And you'll notice there's a formula in there. We can look in the formula bar. It's equal E4 times G4. And um, so it multiplies the quantity by the cost to calculate the value. So we're going to double click the fill pointer uh, and it'll fill that formula. Notice that these are relative cell references. There's no dollar signs in there. So that's why we can double click on the handle and it'll fill that formula all the way down. So, um, okay, so make sure you double click on that. That's step number seven. Step eight, we're going to uh, merge across, um, and then we're going to um, do some word wrap. So select cells A1 through I2, and then click the Merge and Center button, which is on the Home tab in the Alignment group here. So click on this Merge and Center. and um, Select Merge Across. You know, cancel this. We need to click on the button next to it and then Merge Across. Uh, and then we're going to um, select cells F3 and uh, F3 is right here. And click the Expand Formula Bar arrow at the right of the formula bar. So right here. And um, <clears throat> then we're going to click the wrap text button on the home tab in the alignment group. And then we're going to collapse the formula bar again. So just click on that button, collapse it. And so we were just basically seeing that what it said in there, so men's or, if you don't expand the formula bar, all you see is the men's or, you don't see the women's. So since it had that, we used the wrap text to have it um, keep the same column width, but wrap the text so that it's also showing the women's part of the uh, heading, heading for the title of that column. So that completes step number eight. For step nine, we're going to select cells A4 through um, C39. So I'll do that what's in column C here, over at the bottom. And then we're going to um, select the cells F4 through F39. Oh. Oh, and we need to increase the indent button rather, excuse me. So in the home tab, in the alignment group, we're gonna increase the indent button. And that makes it easier to read. And then we're gonna select cells F4, through um, F39, so with just that one column. And we're going to click the center button here. And that also makes it easier to read. And then we're going to select cells G4 through I39. So this, these last three columns here. And we're going to uh, click the number format drop down list and choose currency. We want currency. Okay. And then we're going to select cells A1 through A2 and click the font size and choose 20 as the new size. And then we're going to select cells 
A3 through I3. Basically our column headings and then select the bold font and then click the format button and choose um, we're going to choose row height and we're going to put 35 in there a little bit uh, smaller and hit enter and then complete step nine so now we're going to display and calculate the total inventory value. So we're going to click cell G40. G40 is right here um, in column G, the last row, G40. And we're going to type current inventory value at cost. And press enter and then we're going to select cell G40 and click the bold font and uh, click the align right button in the alignment group here and then we're going to select cell H40 and we're going to put a formula there so um, we're going to double click the auto sum button in the home tab editing group. So right here is the auto sum button. If we double click that, we're going to get some hashtags. So then we need to auto fit. That's because the number there is too large for the width of the column. So we're going to go up here and move your cursor so you get that double line in the column heading and just double click and that'll um, auto adjust it so that it displays the value. Now we're on to step 11. We're going to add borders and set row heights. So we're going to select A3 through I40. So A3 through I40, that whole table basically, all the way down, including the total there. And we're going to click the borders drop down here and uh, select all borders. And that puts borders around all the cells. And then we're going to select cells A4 through I40, which is the bottom part of that. And we're going to uh, click the format button here, and we're going to select row height. And we're going to type 20 this time. Press enter or click OK. And then press control home. That will take us to the top of the workbook or worksheet, rather, and that completes step 11. For step, for step 12, we're going to use the page layout view to insert a, a, a footer. So we're going to click on the um, page layout view button. So here, click on the view button, and then click on the page layout view button, or the view tab rather, and then the page layout view button. And then we're going to click the center header section. So right here, this center header section. And then we're going to click the go to uh, footer button up here, footer footer. That'll take us down to the center of the header, or the footer rather. And then we're going to click the right section in the footer. We're basically just demonstrating we can navigate the footers in the layout, page layout section. And then we're going to click the file name button in the header and footer elements group. So file name button is right here. That'll put the file name in the right section of the footer. And then we're going to click um, a worksheet cell to see the file name. So click on one of these cells up here, we can see the file name. And then we're going to switch to the normal view. Go back to the views here and click on the normal view. And then do the control home again, take you to the top, and that completes step 12. For step 13, we're going to change page setup options. So we're going to click the file tab and choose print. File and print. And then um, we're going to click, oops, 
um, we're going to click the um, next page button. So we're going to click on this next page and just see how, um, yeah, you see how the uh, spreadsheet gets printed. So um, we're going to click the no scaling in the settings area. So over here, um, no scaling right here. And we're going to choose uh, fit sheet on one page. And then we'll notice on the right hand side the number of pages will be significantly less. In fact, it goes down to one page. And then we're going to return to the worksheet by clicking on this button here. And that completes step 13. For step 14, we're going to set a print area. So I'm going to select cells A3 through F11. Oops, through F11. Excuse me. That's the section that we want printed. And then we're going to click the print area button in the page layout. So print area. And we're going to click on the set print area. And then we're going to do control home. Take us to the beginning. And then we're going to click the file tab and print to preview, uh, print to preview the print. So we're going to go to the file and then click on print to preview what it'll look like. And it should render here in just a second. And so then you can see it has the file name down at the bottom there. It just has that. Um, section that we selected as the print area. Okay, and then we're going to return to the worksheet by clicking on this arrow, back arrow. And that completes step 14. So now we just save and close our workbook. This is the one with our name appended at the beginning. And then we go back up to the top here and submit that file. I click on the upload my file and it's in the downloads folder remember it's already in this PC downloads and it's going to be this one here because that's the one I just finished editing and then it'll upload your file and you click yes submit the file and it should come back with what our grade was hopefully it's hundred percent and it is. So there you go. Hope that helps.